When you think of magic, and especially when you think of magic in Warhammer, the first thoughts that probably pop into your head are of great wizards shooting pillars of flame into their foes, or dark necromancers raising armies of the dead to fight at their command. Rarely would you immediately imagine the less flashy arts of transmutation and the studies of alchemy. Chamon, the wind of magic that sounds like it's a tribute to Michael Jackson, also known as the Law of Metal, is the yellow wind of magic, tied to the abstract and logic. It comes across as a bit of a nerd school of magic, really, as it's all about quantification, learning, instructing, and the wish to implement that learning. It was always known to be a powerful school of magic, as you could turn lead into gold, but I'd be lying if I told you either fans or characters in the lore gave it the respect it deserved. That was until one man came along, wearing a golden mask and giving out speeches that could rouse any to battle, Balthazar Gelt took the Warhammer world by storm and proved to all that Chamon, the law of metal, was perhaps the most deadly and impressive school of magic when used in the right way. Yes, that's right ladies and gentlemen, he's here, THE Balthazar Gelt, the supreme patriarch of the Imperial Colleges of Magic. I know I said in an old video that Boris is the biggest Giga Chad in Warhammer Fantasy, but by Sigmar does he have competition in Balthazar. Not much is known about Balthazar Gelt's past, as he seemingly arrived in Altdorf as a man of fairly low birth. A couple of details have emerged from his official biography, but these aren't fully confirmed, and are considered just speculation. According to his own life story, Balthazar was born to a doctor in the court of a border kingdom prince. A talented alchemist from a young age, surpassing the skill of men with decades of experience, Gelt left his home to travel the southern old world as a young man. From his journeys in Tilia, Estalia, and Araby, he expanded on his own wisdom, eventually finding his way into Marienburg, and then travelling to Altdorf, where he was accepted by the senior magisters of alchemy. We do know for certain that Gelt first became known in Marienburg, but it seems likely the rest of his origin story is at least slightly fictional. Once arriving in Marienburg on a ship from Tilia, Gelt made a hasty exit from the city after turning lead into gold to pay for his passage. He then travelled further to Altdorf as soon as he was able. Reflecting on his origin, there are some who believe Balthazar Gelt is almost certainly not his real name, due to the fact it would literally be calling him Balthazar Gold, which is a bit on the nose even for Warhammer. Moreover, those who've spoken to him find his Reichspiel is spoken with the diction of nobility, but his accent betrays a different kind of upbringing. Those in the southern lands who've met him and heard of him refuse to speak of him as well, leading only to further mystery surrounding this individual. There's even a rumour that a bounty was placed on Gelt's head after he swindled his passage from Tilia. But, getting away from the mysterious origin of our golden boy, let's move on to what we actually know about him. He was accepted into Altdorf by the then Patriarch of the Golden Order, Magdalena Althaus, who granted him status as a licensed magister without making him pass any of the usual tests due to his incredible skills with the Law of Metal. He proved to be a master both in the workshops and lecture halls, where he proved to be a popular figure with the apprentices of the Golden Order. Within a decade, Gelt replaced Althaus as the Patriarch of the Order of Metal, becoming the second youngest Patriarch of the Golden Order. Balthazar was not only popular among the mages of the world, but due to his research in Black Powder as well, the Imperial Engineers grew fond of him too. This pursuit of studies into Black Powder may not have been the best interest for our main man, as it did lead to an experiment that caused a massive explosion in the streets of Altdorf. Despite being large enough to destroy an entire street in Altdorf, Gelt managed to survive. None are sure how he managed to come out of this accident with his life, but since then he wore a mask of gold over his face constantly, so none could see the truth behind it. Some say he fused his skin with gold to survive, others believe the accident left him horribly disfigured. Only Balthazar knows the truth, once again adding to his mystery. The explosion only furthered Balthazar's ambition, and he sought further powers through the law of metal, and to climb the ladder of Altdorf himself until he became the Empire's supreme patriarch. The Supreme Patriarch is selected once every eight years, via a duel between a representative of each of the Colleges of Magic. Balthazar Gelt ended up being one of two finalists against the bright wizard Thyrus Gorman, who eventually was defeated, ending the prominence of the Bright Order and replacing it with one of the Golden Order. This catches us up to Balthazar Gelt as he exists in the 8th edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. As a close advisor to Karl Franz, Balthazar proved to be an invaluable asset to the Empire, both on and off the battlefield. Riding atop his pegasus, he could turn entire armies into metal statues using his powerful spells, and at court, he even stopped civil wars among the imperial provinces. 
On one occasion, the Emperor tasked him with preventing war between Nordland and Hockland. In a single night, Balthazar rode to Castle Salismund in Nordland, and turned the gold coins the Elector Count had meant to use to buy mercenaries into lead, essentially stopping the war before swiftly fleeing back to Altdorf on his Pegasus. Balthazar Gelt served as a faithful, albeit ambitious, Supreme Patriarch for many years, up until he died peacefully in his sleep. Nah, just kidding, he died in the end times, like pretty much every character I've covered so far. Let's get back to beating that dead horse, eh chaps? Balthazar's role in the end times might be the most significant we've covered yet on the channel. He was a key player right up until the end, being entrusted with the powers of Chaman in the final battle. Long before that, Balthazar's end times role begins with him actually being separated from the Empire. You see, I said Balthazar was an ambitious bloke, and that ambition led him into falling down the rabbit hole that is necromancy. Kind of like Teclis, Balthazar was willing to go to any measures to stop the end of the world, and this led him to distance himself from the Empire to the point that Gregor Martak is named as his replacement as the Supreme Patriarch. For a long time, Gelt is missing from the story, though he does return towards its end at the Grand Council held in Athel Lauren between all the forces of order. There, when it is revealed that things are looking incredibly bleak, Balthazar is actually one of the few who's pushing for a calmer, more logistical approach to the matter at hand, and rather than just think it's over for everyone, he believes that the world can be saved and is one of the people who comes up with the plan alongside Teclas to create a new vortex in Middenheim. Gelt fights alongside men and dwarves in the final battle of Middenheim, bolstering their armour and weapons with his spells while shredding demons and chaos forces with thousands of bolts of molten metal. His spells run rampant through the enemy lines, and he manages to push deeper into the city, eventually meeting up with the rest of the forces of order to enact their plan and stop Archaon's madness. However, as we know, this wasn't to be, and Balthazar did not survive the final ritual to bring the world back from the brink. It all seemed to be going well. The Incarnates were spending copious amounts of energy to pour their respective winds of magic into saving the world, but then Manfred von Karstein, in perhaps what is the biggest bozo move in the entirety of Warhammer, stabbed Balthazar in the back, removing Chaman from the ritual and forcing it to spiral out of control. Teclas tried to control the wind, but was subsequently destroyed by the overwhelming energy. And so, it is with Balthazar's death that the end of the world was sealed. Tragically, Balthazar Gelt doesn't make it into the mortal realms in Age of Sigmar. I'm not sure he would have been a great fit there, if I'm honest, but I just don't want the times with my best golden boy to end. Thankfully, we have the Total War games to give us further glimpses of not only how much of a beast Balthazar was in the battlefield, but we also get some absolute gems like his welcome to Astalia speech. On the battlefield, Balthazar flew high above on the Pegasus he selected from the Imperial Zoo, before raining down molten metal or turning his enemies into statues with final transmutation. He wore the Cloak of Molten Metal, which not only boosted spellcasting ability, but had an interesting effect that would essentially make it look like there were three or four Balthazars in the air at once essentially making it very difficult for him to be targeted by ranged weaponry. He also carried the Staff of Valance, an item that was more a badge of office for his Supreme Patriarch role than anything else. So, in closing the book on Balthazar Gelt, we've ended up with another great character that was yet another unfortunate casualty of the end of the Warhammer world. Gelt is a brilliant character in Warhammer Fantasy. He shows us how even the Wind of Magic least associated with combat abilities can prove to be devastating on the battlefield and in the politicking of the Empire. Moreover, I think the thing that draws a lot of people to Balthazar, besides the memes and the sick ass design, is his mystery. Even with his biography trying to paint a picture of his life, we don't know his origins for sure, nor do we know why he has such an incredible ambition. He fights on the side of good, yes, or order I suppose, as there's not really any good guys in Warhammer, and yet we're not truly sure whether he can be trusted. His ambition, as we later see, leads him down some pretty dark paths, and his mysterious nature means we can't really say for sure what his endgame is. But there is one thing we know for sure about Balthasar Gelt, and that he is a very cool character. Thanks for watching. Again, if you've made it this far, why not throw a like or subscribe my way? It helps out a lot. Any other characters you want me to cover in the future, let me know. But until then, I'll be seeing you.